It's time to start the process of getting the back off this four wheel drive fire truck and turning it into the most epic expedition camper. Hey folks, my name's Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life. And this is one of the projects that I am super excited about at the moment. If you've been following the channel for the last month or so, you'll know that I very recently purchased this uh, truck. It is a Mercedes uh, six liter, six cylinder turbo diesel uh, truck. It's a 10 ton truck and uh, it has been in the Cornwall Fire Service in the south of England for the last nearly 30 years. It's a 1994 model, so it's verging on being a classic, but it's in really good condition. And I'm super excited. We're just about uh, in the process of taking the back end off it, going to strip it right down to the chassis, going to build a custom subframe, going to build a custom camper box over the top of that. And it's going to be a pretty epic exp expedition vehicle for exploring and traveling and everything else, all the stuff that we love and the stuff that we love to share with you guys here on the channel. So I'm really glad that you're here. Let's get stuck into getting the back end off this truck and uh, see where it takes us and what we get up to. So let's go. So the first task was to start undoing things and removing bits and pieces, all the fire fighting paraphernalia that was on this thing. So uh, at the back underneath the water pump, there was just a bit of tread plate that was um, slung across there and uh, various things that needed removing, needed to remove the hoses uh, from there. So I undid all of those so we could lift them out. They're actually pretty heavy. I was surprised at how heavy they are. So I undid all of those. Then we needed to cut a load of wiring and remove air lines and all sorts of bits and pieces that were uh, being used by the firemen when they used the back end of this fire truck so lots of bits and pieces all the while uh, measuring and trying to plan and start to think about the box that i'm going to put on here all right so we're calling it a day uh unfortunately not as quick as we'd hoped but essentially what we realized here is that it's not actually going to be possible to lift this up high enough to just drive the truck forward so as you can see here um that's not going to clear the spring assembly and everything because essentially the base plate there has to get to sort of this height to clear the wheel. And so that's not going to happen. Uh, so yeah, we were going for that option just because it was going to be hopefully a little bit less work than the alternative. The alternative is essentially on the roof, uh, pretty much all the way along on the roof, uh, there's cross members that hold these two together. And so what we found and what I imagine is when they assemble these, they probably put one side at a time. So they probably put this side on and then secure it with the cross members and then attach the other side as well. So we're going to have to take it apart in the same sort of way, um, just because it's just not going to clear these holes to be able to just drive the vehicle forward like we had hoped. So, yeah. All right, folks, we're back at it for another day of stripping down the fire truck. So previously I mentioned that um, we were just struggling with these points here. I'll find one quickly to show you. So essentially stuff like this here, where they've built the box around the uh, um, spring assembly. And so uh, it's just going to be very difficult to just lift the box up over that to then drive the truck out from underneath it. And it's particularly on the front ones uh, where it's a real problem. So what I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm just trying to decide, am I going to um, cut around these spring assemblies to be able to still uh, stick to the original plan of lifting the box up? Or am I going to remove all of the stuff in the middle here so all of this stuff in the middle is actually uh, separate to the two sides um, so we could actually just take all of the screws and bolts and things off from the middle here and uh, separate the two sides and then take them off individually and so the couple of uh, thoughts that i have on this one is although it would be quite a cumbersome thing and fairly big and heavy to maneuver just keeping everything together it in some ways it makes it a little bit easier because it's a fairly solid thing and it's fairly easy and stable to be able to sort of jack each corner up in turn uh chalk it up put stuff underneath it to hold it and um uh, while we sort of do the other corners that sort of thing so it's a fairly easy process from that point of view um, which is a positive the negative is uh, that obviously I have to cut those corners out with an angle grinder and that'll be a fair amount of work and and anybody that's ever cut a lot of stuff with an angle grinder especially under a vehicle it's no fun 
<laughs> it's a bit of a dog of a job, but anyway. Um, the alternative is quite a lot of work to remove all of this stuff here, probably quite a lot of work to remove all of this stuff here in the middle um, and to be able to separate the two sides. So I'm just trying to decide what's the easiest and simplest way of doing that, um, and then we're going to go for it. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, quick update. I decided to cut out these corners here in these lockers to allow space for the uh, box to go past the spring assemblies there. So I've done that on both sides. I'll take you around to the other side now. Same on this side here. Um, looking pretty good. Loads of room just to be able to lift that past there. And uh, on the back lockers, uh, this one is getting pretty close to the spring here. So I might just cut a bit of that bodywork away there. We might find that as we lift it, it may just push past the spring there fine. Um, so yeah, we'll give it a shot and to see how that works. So the basic approach was to do it in stages. We tried with the tractor to just lift the back end up, but it was too heavy. So then we just jacked it up in stages, just putting blocks under, moving the jack around to all the corners. I used a high lift jack, thought, found that to be the most effective way of doing it. Okay, stop there. Whoa. Lifting up the final corner, looking good. It's looking good so far. The drum fit underneath, one more. Whole back is sitting on four drums now. Do you think the back here is alright or should we level it? Push the drum under a bit more. I think it'd be good to make it more stable. You can see here. I'd like to get this more stable as well. Fuel filler dangling down there. So it needs to go up a bit more to drive it out. See we're pinching the, the cable here. It looks like it was going to clear it, but it's literally yeah. just pinched. Just on that front, on that um, spring. In the Yeah. 
It's also the tank. The tank is. What's Is the tank catching on the edge there on the top? On that. Yeah, it's pretty close. Uh, we need to get up and have a look there. We'll have to scoot the barrel then. need to get in here with a, I don't know, but the, the tank is it's passing, most of it is passing, so I think yeah. it's... Right, well, the back end is off. And we have a truck with a water tank over here. It's got a little bit hairy there, just getting that off, but it was all hands at the pump, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but yeah, pretty stoked with that. Still a lot of work to do. I mean, now we can see what's on here and where we can actually start with changing things and getting stuff off there and that. So um, yeah, it's looking good. Once I had the main uh, bits of the back end off, I could pull it into the barn where I could start attacking the water tank and the water pump. Okay, so here we have it. I have removed the bolts there on that bracket there. This bracket disconnected all the pipes and stuff here that need to be disconnected. And same on this side. I've disconnected that join there, so in theory that should now just lift straight up. And I think we are ready. I've got a lock and tackle on the roof there with the tank chained up so we're about to lift these were pretty straightforward and easy compared to the rest of the back end that we took off literally just a case of undoing things uh, undoing wires and anything else that's connected to these uh, that connects these to the vehicle The water pump was pretty straightforward as well. It was just literally had four bolts holding it down, fairly significant, substantial bolts at that. Uh, but yeah, once I had the PTO off and other cables and various bits and pieces, it was pretty straightforward just to lift up. Here comes the pump. Off to the pile of things to be sold. So here's where we've got to folks. We have disconnected the drive shaft for the PTO and I've also uh, just taken the bolt off, the, sorry, the nut off the uh, cable for the throttle for the uh, water pump, just because uh, it would still affect the throttle. So I don't want that happening just by accident. Uh, but yeah, we're looking pretty good. We've got the uh, water tank off and the water pump off and we're down to just the subframe and then the chassis. Obviously got a bunch to do in terms of the wiring and figuring all of that out, uh, but we've made good progress. Um, we're obviously now going to need to uh, overhaul the chassis, clean up any corrosion or rust or anything like that, respray it, uh, retreat it, all that sort of stuff. Um, probably going to move the fuel tank elsewhere and uh, yeah, we're going to figure that out. But overall, pretty pleased with the progress and uh, with how it's looking. And then finally removing the subframe. Uh, this was 
a little bit tricky. Uh, the bolts were fairly worn and, and fairly rusty, um, just seized really, not really corroded, you know, and they just get rusty and seized. So it took a bit of work to get to them. And they're also in awkward places. So they're in these tiny little brackets they'd built. It was very difficult. You could Some of them you could barely even get a sort of ring and flat spanner onto, let alone a rattle gun or socket or anything like that. So it's a bit of a hit and miss. One of them I had to cut with a, an angle grinder. But yeah, we got there in the end. All right, we've got the subframe off there. A little bit hectic getting past these uh, air tanks with all the airlines wrapped around them there. Subframe is on the tractor and it's ready to back out of here. So let's go. And, uh, try and go back. Right, quick run through on where we're at. So throttle cable for the PTO is off. Uh, PTO is disconnected. Subframe is off. As you can see, I've just slung all of the cables and the airlines and everything just with some planks straight onto the chassis. Chassis is looking pretty good. Couple of places that need a bit of attention just where the subframe was uh, sitting right on the chassis. Had to remove the spring for the cab to be able to get the subframe off. And then uh, just ease the past all these airlines. Obviously, the air tanks are going to have to go elsewhere. We'll need to relocate those. Uh, so that's fine. And then have to unpick all of this wiring here. But uh, overall, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with how everything's looking here. Well, folks, we have made great progress. As you can see, we have the back off the fire truck and we are ready to start preparing the chassis for building our own subframe that we'll then put the custom camper box on. Bit of a slog to get here. Uh, really getting all of that off was a lot more work than I realized. Um, and I mean, to be honest, we the work is only just starting now in the sense that we still have a load to do in terms of unpicking some of the wiring because obviously I've labeled all of the main things, so like the main lights at the back, so indicator, brake lights, reverse light, all that sort of stuff. But there's still a load of wiring there that don't know what it does. There's uh, loads of different things in there that we need to unpick, take out stuff that's redundant, that we don't no longer need, that's specific to the fire engine, i.e. emergency lights, all that sort of stuff. All that wiring, we need to take that out because uh, we won't need those anymore. And then we can um, start preparing the chassis and get that ready. We still have the old subframe on here from that the uh, water tank and the water pump were sitting on. Uh, and we're gonna re be removing that and replacing it with our own subframe. Uh, but yeah, overall looking pretty good. So I'm pretty pleased with the progress. Obviously we'll keep you guys updated. It's gonna be a, a long-term ongoing project and obviously we'll update you on the channel here. But thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.